everyone, welcome to episode six of the Willow Co. Crafts podcast, a podcast about knitting and sewing and my other crafty endeavors. My name is Emily, and you can find me on both Ravelry and Instagram as Willow Cove Crafts. Today is Sunday, July 11th, I believe, and I am coming to you from just outside of Madison in Verona, Wisconsin. It has been about two weeks since I last recorded, so thank you to all of you who watched my previous episode. Uh, welcome, whether you are a returning viewer or this is your first time to my channel. Uh, if you like what you see, please give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe. Um, the last two weeks have been kind of busy for me, and so I haven't gotten as much knitting done as I would have maybe liked. I'm elbowing my door. Um, I have mentioned in my previous episodes that I turned 30 on July 4th, and we had a pretty big party to celebrate, and you know, I took a couple of days off of work to help get ready, and also I just needed a little bit of time off, and so um, I did take three days off of work over the last couple of weeks, um, but a lot of that was spent prepping for the party. We were, you know, cooking and picking up supplies and shopping and, you know, getting things set up and that took a lot of time and then cleaning up obviously uh, was also a big task and so you know surrounding my birthday I had a couple days off but it was very full and I didn't get as much sewing and knitting done as I would typically like if I have a couple days off of work um, but it was super fun. Uh, I had a really great time. I think my guests did as well, hopefully. And yeah, it was great. I uh, probably won't have another birthday party for a really long time. They are definitely a lot of work hosting something like that. So um, yeah, now that that is over, hopefully uh, over the next couple weeks, I can get into more of a routine of uh, crafting. I still have to write all of my thank you cards, which always takes some time. But once that's done, hopefully there will be lots of knitting in my future. So let's get into some knitting content today. I have one finished knitting project. Um, and they are my socks. I've shown these on the last couple episodes, but I knit my sister a pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks for Christmas. Um, so these are for her and they are gonna, you know, go away until Christmas time. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with how they turned out. I love seeing a nice crisp finished pair of socks on sock blockers. Um, but yes, this is the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern by Erica Luter, a very uh, popular pattern on Ravelry. It is free and it's just this kind of simple pearl stitch pattern. The yarn I used is Three Irish Girls in their Adorn Lux base, which is an 85% merino, 15% nylon, and the colorway is called Baby I'm a Star. And so one last time, that's the yarn for this socks. Um, it's picking up the color okay on the screen. Um, these socks like truly are kind of a fluorescent teal, which, uh, my sister loves really bright colors, so hopefully she will enjoy these come Christmas time. On to knitting works in progress. I have four knitting 
projects going on at the moment. One is new and three you have seen before if you've watched previous episodes. I will start with my new cast on this week. Because I finished my socks, obviously, you know, I really enjoy having a single pair of socks on the go at all times to keep in my purse for when I'm out and about. So I cast on a new pair of socks. Uh, these are gonna be for me. And the yarn I am using is called Coloration by Ogle Design. And it is, as you can see there, an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon sock yarn. Um, and it actually came in two cakes because this yarn uh, does a little bit of an ombre. I purchased this a couple years ago at the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, I meant to check this, but I think Ogle Design is somewhat local to me. I'm not quite sure, uh, but I've seen them quite a bit at uh, specifically the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival. I've been there a couple times and uh, they always bend there. Um, but here is my sock so far. And you can tell that it's, you know, starting at this kind of dark brick red and that ultimately it's going to fade into, uh, it looks pretty white on the screen. Well, maybe not, my shirt is white. Uh, so you can tell that it's actually a very light pink. Um, and then obviously, because I have two cakes, I will be able to make two matching socks that both fade the same way. Um, this is just my standard vanilla sock recipe. I'm doing uh, 64 stitches, two by two rib at the top, size one needles. Uh, I'm not quite there yet, but I will do a heel flap and gusset. Uh, and I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do the heel. I don't want to interrupt the fading. So what I might do is if I can find it, yep. Um, well, oh yeah. So if I kind of pull on the center, uh, hopefully I can kind of like pull from the other end of the ball and use that to knit the heel flap. And then that way um, I don't have to cut my yarn and interrupt uh, kind of the smooth fade that I expect will happen with this. Uh, so yeah, these are really fun. It's kind of addicting just to like watch the color slowly fade. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about those. I think those are gonna be super cute. Next up, let's talk about my sweater, um, the sweater that never ends. Um, I am knitting the Sumac sweater by Orlain Suka, and I love this sweater, but I feel like it will never be finished. I've been working on it since April, and it is now July and I don't know why it's taking so long. Um, I suppose I've been working on a lot of other things and so I just haven't put the time into this that I would like, um, but I'm gonna put it out into the universe that I'm gonna have this finished my next episode. Um, I would really love to do that and move on with my life. Um, so the sweater I am knitting out of Cascade 220, which is a 100% uh, wool, worsted weight. This is the eggplant colorway, and this is my last skein. Um, I'm almost done with my current skein, and I'll probably just need to dip into this a little bit um, because I am almost done. And so here it is. That's the front, yep. So last episode, I was on the a uh, cuff of my first sleeve. I have my Sucre Sucre Miniatures little macaroon. Um, I bought this because 
uh, uh, well, it's cute, but my boyfriend, Dan, uh, he really likes to bake and he had a bit of a macaroon phase. And I bought this because it reminded me of him. Um, but anyways, I was on the cuff of my first sleeve and since then I finished that sleeve and I am uh, maybe about a third to half of the way down my second sleeve. So I'm getting really close. I am hoping when I record again in two weeks that this is finished. In fact, I might just like power through this and only work on this until it is done. I really think I could finish it in a couple of nights. Um, but yeah, let me kind of lean back so you can see the whole thing. It's a really nice sweater. I love the different texture panels. Um, I've spoken about this before, but I especially love the texture on the sleeves. There's a fuzz here. Um, I think just these vertical lines make it look really sharp. Um, but yeah, we are getting so close. I just need to be done with it. Next episode, I'm going to call it right now. It's going to be finished. Um, I am making the largest size, which is an extra large. It, um, is fitting really well. So I have a 45 inch bust. This is about 50 to 51 inches, um, in final circumference. So, um, it's got a little bit of positive ease and it's really cozy. Um, so yeah. Hopefully I finish that by next episode and I can kind of put it on and model it for you and show you how it fits. So keep your fingers crossed for me that maybe I will finish this and have a new uh, sweater to show you next week. I can dream, right? Next up is my shawl project. I, for the last couple of weeks, have been working on the Hildebert shawl. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm probably not doing a very good job of saying that word. Um, it'll be in the show notes um, in the description, but it's the Hildebert shawl by Fiber Tales. I am using uh, just some bare yarn from Knit Picks. This is their Preciosa base, which is a single ply fingering, 100% wool. Um, and again, this is just uh, the bear. So it's a, again, my shirt is white. So it's kind of a yellowy off-white color. Um, and here is my progress. Last episode, I was where my tiramisu marker was, so I've put about an inch on it. The rows are getting really long, and especially when I have to do bobbles. Um, I don't mind doing bobbles, but they do take a while, and so the bobble rows slow me down a little bit, um, and you know, things are getting quite wide. Um, I counted yesterday and I believe I have seven more bobble rows to do before I am done with the body of the shawl. So it feels like I'm nearing the end, but you know, each repeat is four rows and so I've got seven repeats left and um, that is a lot of knitting still, especially as the rows are getting quite long. Um, so I'm probably not really nearing the end, but it kind of feels like I am. Um, and then once I am done with this body section, I will uh, be knitting the border, which is pretty heavily cabled. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun to work through, um, especially after this like very kind of simple meditative bobble section. Um, we'll be doing something that's a little more complicated and I haven't knit cables in a while and I really love knitting cables. 
So I'm looking forward to getting to the border on this. So again, that's my Hildebert shawl by Fiber Tales. I'm really enjoying this project. The yarn is so soft. Um, I don't think I will finish this one anytime soon, but hopefully um, we still got a couple months of summer left, um, but hopefully this one will be ready by the time it starts to get chilly again in the fall and I'll have a fresh new shawl to wear. My last knitting work in progress today is my Slip Stravaganza Blanket by Stephen West. Um, I think you're going to be seeing this one for many episodes to come. It's definitely a big undertaking. It's a huge blanket. Um, but since last episode, again, love a good, uh, food stitch marker, but I was at my croissant last episode, so just before this uh, kind of peach edging. And since then I've started, you know, I finished up this honeycomb section and I've started, I forget what he calls it, um, but it's a different textured section. Let me kind of lean back so you can get the whole picture. But yes, I am using the recommended yarn, which is Westwool Tandem, which is Stephen West's line of yarn. This is the DK base, and it is 90% uh, merino, 10% textile, which I still have not looked up what that is. Uh, yes, I ordered this uh, directly from his shop, which is Stephen and Penelope in the Netherlands. Um, I should have done a little more research to see if I could have bought it from a more local shop, but next time. Um, I am using quite a few different colors. I'm not going to go through them today because, um, I've gone through them in previous episodes. Um, so maybe every couple times I show this, I'll go through the colors. Um, one modification I have made is that the pattern calls for a main color and three contrasting colors. I believe I have seven contrasting colors. Um, so just playing with, with the color palette a little bit more than what the pattern calls for. Um, and I'm really loving how it is turning out. I um, just bought a new couch yesterday and it's not going to be here for a while. It's getting delivered in September, but hopefully um, not soon after that, I'll have this blanket done and uh, I can drape it over my pretty new couch and everything will be cozy, just how I like it. Um, my current couch, this is like such a tangent. My current couch is 30 years old. I believe my parents bought it right around when I was born and it is not the prettiest couch in the world. I took it off my parents' hands when I like moved out after college, which was a while ago at this point. And it's this like, I was actually talking to um, the sales lady at the furniture store and like explaining to her what my current couch looks like. And um, it's this like light blue, it's not camouflage, but it's, that's the closest thing I can think to describe it. But I was telling the, the woman about this and she was like, oh yeah, I know exactly what fabric you're talking about. That was super popular in the early nineties. I was like, that makes a lot of sense because that's how old the couch is. Um, it's super uncomfortable. We have a, a wooden board underneath the cushions to keep it from collapsing on itself. Um, anyways, <laughs> this blanket deserves a better couch and I am working on providing it one. So that is my Slip Stravaganza blanket by Stephen West and um, I think it's a really nice thing to work on, especially 
Um, as I'm approaching that cable border on my shawl, I think that's definitely gonna uh, require a bit more concentration, but this project is pretty simple and kind of, uh, kind of mindless. Like once you establish a section, you just kind of go. And uh, it's really fun. And I recommend it if you are looking for a blanket project. Uh, but it is not for the faint of heart. It's going to be a lot of stitches at the end. Um, I feel like this episode is going really fast. So I think I will uh, take a minute and talk about upcoming knitting projects, um, especially since I am nearly finished with my sweater. I'm starting to think about what I want to start next. Um, so I have a couple options. I think I will go the responsible route and um, I have a baby knit I need to do. I am knitting, um, if you've watched previous episodes, a couple episodes back, I knit a Lorna bonnet for one of my friends who's having a baby any day now. She's ready to pop. Um, but I have another friend who is having a baby in September and I wanted to also knit her the same bonnet in um, different colors. Uh, so I think that is probably what I will cast on once I finish my sweater. I'm hoping, you know, it's a little baby bonnet so that will knit up pretty quickly. Um, but what I have really been wanting to knit and like have been craving like no other is a mohair sweater. I'm just like really dying to knit with mohair right now for some reason. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, um, I've mentioned many a time that I have a lot of unfinished projects sitting in my closet. So I have a half finished no frills sweater um, so I might pick that up, um, and then that's going to be, you know, it's going to feel like a head start. The sweater is half done, and if you're familiar with that pattern, you know that it calls for a fingering weight and mohair held double. So uh, I think that is an obvious choice for my next sweater project. But I, like I said, do think I'm going to take a little detour and knit that little bonnet just because I want to get that done and out of the way before the baby comes. All right, we are going to move into sewing content and I have a finished sewing object this week. Um, I showed the start of this last week and I have since worn and washed it so it is a little wrinkly so please uh, don't mind that. But I finished my Eve dress by Sew Over It. Um, and I sewed this dress for my birthday party that I have mentioned previously. Um, so the Eve dress is a wrap dress and it comes in two versions. I knit, I believe, version one, which is uh, got the flutter sleeves and the high low hem. Uh, version two, I believe, has a three-quarter length sleeve and then a uh, single length hem. I don't know what you would call that. Um, and I was almost done with it the last time I recorded, but I since finished it and wore it to my birthday party. And uh, hopefully I will try and insert a couple of photos here for you to see me wearing it. I used for this dress is um, a little wild and crazy for me. This is, and I have to look at my notes because 
there's a lot of descriptors going on, but this was called Belladonna Bright Coral. It's a 100% cotton lawn, and the designer is Kristen Balak or Balouch. Um, and she designed this fabric for birch fabrics. I will put all of that in the show notes in case you uh, want to go look that up. But it's it's picking up pretty well. I would say the background color is a little bit more of a fluorescent orange, if that makes sense. It's coming off a little redder on the screen. Um, but yes, I wanted something that was a little out of the box for my party. Um, I've mentioned this before and I think like maybe you get the sense if you've watched some of my episodes, but I do enjoy uh, more neutral colors. Um, this is a bit crazy. Um, so I don't actually know how often I will wear this dress now. Um, I'm hoping I can find a couple occasions because I do really like the way the dress fits and looks. Um, it is just a little too fancy, I suppose, or, you know, just too bold for me to wear on a day to day. Um, it's definitely a good dress if you have like a kind of fancier day occasion. Like I could imagine wearing this to a bridal shower or a baby shower or something like that. Um, but yeah, it definitely does not fit into my normal aesthetic, which is just like white, black, gray, tan. Um, yeah, I have kind of gotten the, the garment sewing bug a little bit. So I have purchased a lot of fabrics, some of which, um, you know, I kind of love the idea of regularly wearing floral dresses. I would love if I could feel more comfortable wearing something like this on a day to day. So, you know, maybe I'll just like force myself to wear it sometimes. Um, because I do really like it. So why not? right? Anyways, uh, once again, this is the Eve dress by Sew Over It. Um, hopefully at this point you'll have seen some pictures and so you'll get a better sense of uh, what it looks like on. Um, but this was my first uh, dress pattern that I ever sewed. I think it went pretty smoothly. Um, I definitely am not like the cleanest sewer at this point. I'm really hoping with my next couple garment projects I can really focus on um, making things a bit neater. Um, small things, right? Like like this bias binding, like the sewing is a little uneven. Um, you know, just little nitpicky things, but you know, in an effort to make my clothes that I make look as professional as possible, um, I'm hoping to uh, get a little bit better at those things and maybe slow down a little bit and uh, really take the time to make a professional object. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it went for my first go around. So that brings me to my final work in progress this week. Um, oh my gosh. There's like a, a super pretty cardinal on my porch. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, anyways, I started a new sewing project. I think I talked about this a little bit last week, but I hadn't started it, so I didn't show it. Um, I was just kind of in the planning phases a little bit. Um, but my friend Amanda is having a baby in December. It is her first baby and I have known Amanda since we were very small, not very small, middle school. Um, and she has, you know, just been one of my best friends over the years. Um, and we have known each other. It's crazy to think that we've known each other longer than we haven't known each other. I think we met, we met when we were 12. And then I think we got really close and became good friends when we were like freshmen in high school. Um, 
But anyways, we've stayed in really good touch even though she doesn't live around and I'm uh, really excited and happy uh, that she's having a baby. It's, it's really something. Um, and you know, she is a knitter. I know she watches this. So hi, Amanda. Um, yeah, I wanted to, I don't know, because Amanda's a knitter, I feel like she can make a lot of her own knitting stuff. And so I thought, you know, why not make something really special and make the baby a baby quilt. Um, so I have started that. Um, I'm not very far, um, but I am making the Trippy Quilt by Southern Charm Quilts. And um, I don't want to kind of give away the secret sauce on how the quilt is made, um, but what it kind of looks like is it's essentially a patchwork quilt um, with just lots of little squares, but the way she does it, you end up getting lines of like fabrics. And so, and then you, you lay the blocks a certain way. And so it ends up looking like, kind of like a fractured diamond, if that makes any sense. It probably doesn't, but you know, I will show you as I go. Um, but I am using a jelly roll that I got, um, I believe I purchased this in New Orleans. I went on a trip to New Orleans last year, right before lockdown started. Um, it was early March. Um, I had a friend who was living in New Orleans at the time, so I went to go visit her. And then um, pretty much as soon as I got home was when uh, things started getting a little strange. Uh, but anyways, we were, I believe on Magazine Street is what it's called, if you're familiar with the area at all. And I looked it up, the shop is called Chateau So-and-So. Um, it's a cute little fabric shop, so of course I stopped in. I love a good souvenir yarn or fabric. Uh, but I got this jelly roll and I'll just give you a little sampling. Um, I started sewing the strips together to uh, subcut into the squares, if I can unfold it. Um, but here's just a few. Um, and when I bought it, I thought it would make a really cute baby quilt. I'm not into things that are super obviously baby. Um, and I thought this really fit the bill. A lot of the fabrics are like gray and black with like just a hint of blue. Um, so I think the overall quilt will read very neutral, but it does have a few little color pops. Um, I also really like that this blue is more dusty than like a true baby blue. Um, so yeah, I thought it was like, really cutesy in just the right ways, but not like overly baby. So, you know, the blanket's not gonna be full size. It is gonna be a baby quilt size, but hopefully uh, he will uh, love it and be able to use it until he's a little bit older. Um, I did wanna show you a few of my favorite fabrics out of the collection. Um, I don't think I mentioned, but this is cotton and steel. I think, I forget. I think it was called like Japan, maybe. They they did, from what I gather, like an around the world series of fabrics. Um, I don't know what about these fabrics makes them Japanese, but that is what the label said. Um, but um, a couple of my favorite ones, uh, this is like a metallic, gold floral, which PSA, in my opinion, little boys can have flowers in their stuff. Flowers are for everyone, in my opinion. Um, I also really like, this one is another one I really like. Again, I really enjoy this like, kind of dusty blue color. I think it looks really great. So there is a quite a few different fabrics in that jelly roll. Um, so that's just a few, but um, 
yep, just barely have gotten started on that. Um, but I'm hoping it will come together pretty quickly. Um, and I will, again, the, the baby's coming in December, so I'm really hoping to have that done before he's born. Uh, so he can have a, a cute little quilt from me. As far as upcoming sewing projects are concerned, I have so many things I want to make. It's like really hard for me to pick. Um, I'm really trying to keep my works in progress, you know, knitting and sewing as a, a whole uh, down to a minimum just because I like seeing really good progress on things. Um, and if you have 10 works in progress going, you know, if that's your thing, great. But for me, I don't see the progress I would like to on things, even though like I really want to cast on 10 things or start 10 new sewing projects. I try not to so that I can actually finish things up. Um, but I am contemplating, you know, I've got the quilt. Um, I would like to have a garment on the go. Um, I have recently purchased quite a bit of fabric, um, probably way too much to show you here. So I'll just show that as I come to it. Um, but I did just wash a like oatmeal colored linen to make a tank top. Um, so I might do that. That probably would be a pretty quick project. I also really would like to have um, what I would call like a slow stitching project, something that um, is kind of hand stitched or hand pieced. Um, just because I really like hand sewing, I really like embroidery, um, cross stitching, you know, just something that's a little bit more, you know, it's just a slightly different feel than like something like a quilt that you would sew on the machine. Um, I really want to start, I have purchased a kit from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It's this super like kitschy, adorable Christmas wreath pattern. I think it's a, a mystery club that they did, but it's pretty much all released by now, but I did buy a kit from them. Um, I don't know, I am really wanting to have a Christmas project on the go. Uh, so that's something I, I might start. I want to, but I don't want to because I know that once I start some sort of, you know, cross stitching, that's gonna take time away from my other projects. So I'm sure you all are familiar with this uh, struggle. So we'll see, I don't know. Um, but I think that is about it for me this week. Again, thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time or if you're a returning viewer, please like and subscribe. I really like um, any comments that you want to leave. I love reading those. Um, yeah, I will hopefully be recording again in two weeks. So I will see you then. Uh, happy knitting and sewing. Hopefully uh, everyone is working on fun projects. Uh, and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.